Hello and what is going on today guys, Tomcat here and welcome back to a brand new map in Spin Tires Modern. This is called La Luna 2 and we've got two vehicles to start out our adventure here. We've got this Daihatsu Rocky which is new. We've also got our Jeep JK that we've used a couple times before and I'm going to set off in the Rocky because I've never used it before. Um, the steering wheel does turn, other than that it's got a cage and that's about it for the interior. So let's go ahead and get it started and we'll leave from the starting point. Now there really is no garage here at the start so so you kind of have to make your own way in whatever it is that you spawned in with. Um, don't don't bring anything here that requires a lot of like stuff to be installed in the garage for it to work properly because you're not going to be able to install those things. So setting off, it's I mean it just seems like a road so far. I don't know. I'm not sure what all the fuss is about just yet. Oh, the game's freezing. Okay. I think there's a lot of custom objects on this map, so... Oh yeah, there's a crap ton of custom objects here, so the game kind of freaks out a bit. The The game doesn't know what to do. Because um, there's... what What will happen is the game will basically end up getting overloaded, and then it will... Regardless of how powerful your PC is, the game will actually properly freak out and not know what to do. So, they've actually put one... Um, usable vehicle over here in, in the midst of all of these prop vehicles. And I'm actually... Okay, so that just goes behind and back around. It doesn't actually go anywhere. I was like, does this actually go anywhere? It seems like it just goes behind the building and then... Yeah, it goes behind the building and then loops back around the other way. And actually, clearly, you probably weren't supposed to drive back there because it looks a little unfinished. But without... Oh, God. But without going back there, this area does look pretty cool. Oh, that prop, that prop freaked out when we got close to it. So there's a, a couple of instabilities on this map, I can already tell. Now... Oh, jeez. What I'm not, what I'm kind of confused about is why would they make that UAZ a prop when the like there's a there's like a Kraz in there that was not a prop whatsoever. Does that go through the river? I mean, I guess. Like we've started in this corner, you can either stay on the road, or you can go up here. It's actually not that big of a map. It's it's really not. And I think I, I really I think I have no you know uh, no reason not to check this out because. I have brought along a secondary vehicle anyway, so just in case something does go uh, mildly wrong, then we'll be, you know, we'll be fine. We have another vehicle to, to, to take out. Let's see. It's kind of like a track car and a daily. It's like if the track car breaks, you still have your daily. Wow, it drops off dramatically right there. Okay, yeah, that is not going to be, that is not going to be usable, at least for this thing. Let's get out of here. Let's throw it eye and get out of here. Get back on the road. Whoa, it gets really deep there. That's not exactly where I would expect it to get deep either. It, it just gets deep there. I do like how they've kind of, like, people have started using that, uh, using those reeds more. They've started to use that object more in maps, and it adds more believability to marshy areas and swampy areas. And I think the, the whole nature aspect of these maps does add a lot to the believability like and how much time and effort they put into making the you know the nature aspect of the map and the environment look more real and look more believable because i mean if you if you have a marshy you know swampy area chances are there's going to be some reeds in it and it's like if you take the time to put the reeds in that area then it makes it look oh god the map freaked out but yeah if you take the time to put the like the reeds in that area then it will look more believable so, oh, it's freaking out again. I think the more we drive along this map, like, the less that, the less and less that'll happen. A lot of the times when you have maps that have, like, the game has never loaded a specific set of custom objects before, it does tend to freak out. So there's a bridge over the river right there, and there's a watch point up here by the lumber mill, which I would really like to go and, uh, go and clear. I would really like to figure that out and clear it out. So they've got actual traffic signs and everything out here, dude. They're, they, they went to, they went to a good amount of work. I love how they're telling you, they're like, oh, so we could go, hmm, go this way or we could stay on the road. I'm thinking I'm going to stay on the road. I love these switchbacks, too. This is like a proper mountain road, like a toge road, which is awesome for Mud Runner because you really never get those. I mean, other than like, you know, the maps that come with the game. And, it, and I'm sure all you guys remember the map, you know, the hill from the original spin tires. I mean, this reminds me a lot of that already. So there's our watch point, our first one at least. And that gives... Oh, okay. 
So that pretty much reveals that we've got a couple of paths that we could take up here. Got another garage across the... Well, actually, no, that is the garage. Um, now, it is currently locked, but I'm sure there's a truck with a trailer somewhere around the map to unlock it with. Now, what I'm going to do from here is I'm probably going to... Oh, wait, there's a garage trailer right here. A C260 and a garage trailer. What is a C260 again? Oh, okay. So then you would hitch it up to that. Got it. So that's how you get that garage unlocked. So back to the Daihatsu Rocky Crawler, which which d delightfully is recallable. So if we ever do have any issues where we need to recall this thing, no problem. We can just recall it straight away. We should be able to drive down this hill without dying. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, it's actually not that steep. It's not as bad as I thought. As long as you let it, you know, roll forward with the momentum, you'll be fine. Easy, easy. Oh, God, this thing hates mud. I've just found, I've just discovered this. This thing absolutely despises mud. Woo! All right. So, that is one hell of a mud hole, and I am not taking this little thing anywhere near it. No, sir. That is not what this thing is made for. It has proven that on multiple occasions. Now, the Jeep is actually pretty decent in the mud. The, the Jeep is way better than this thing in the mud. So, let's grab the Jeep now. And I actually really wish the Jeep was recallable. Oh, my God. Really? Really? So they make you... Uh, oh, that's... Hmm. I mean, to be fair, it's like, it's not that big of a deal, but let's go to the C260. And we'll lock everything up with the diffs and everything. Then we'll attach this trailer to it, and we'll go unlock that garage. Because I, I'm, I'm actually, you know, properly dedicated to exploring this map. It's a very interesting map to me. And I want to get it explored. I genuinely want to get it explored. So we do have some uh, have some map progress stuff to do. Attach garage trailer. And that... Whoa, don't back up though. Alright, we're good. So now we can set off with the garage trailer. Now, this is a bit of a heavy... Uh, this is a bit of a heavy proposition, uh, I think, for this thing to tow through the mud. But these trucks are very resilient. They can, they can go through endless endless mud without bogging down so i think we should be okay but the it always like cracks me up that that thing has like that trailer has train wheels on it it's it literally got like metal you know not they look like train wheels i don't think they actually are but they're just metal wheels and it always cracks me up that they're on there like that because i'm trying to think about how 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 really how difficult that would be to pull through mud with a real truck like that would be really really difficult and don't think that for a second that we're going to get any help through here from the Daihatsu Rocky I mean that thing is not going to help this thing along at all through mud it's just not going to do it it's it's uh it's it's pretty well not even going to come close but this is actually a lot shallower than i expected it to be so we seem to be in good hands here and this truck is just putting its grip down like a beast. Once we get through here, it's actually a fairly short drive over to the garage, or at least it looks like it is. Because all we gotta do is go down the main road, cross the bridge, and then we're good to go. Cross the bridge, drive up the road, boom, done. So it, it seems like a very easy little route. Let's put it up into high, and then we'll put it up into automatic. And then, whoa! The steering is so damn slow. I had the, like, I had the controller, like, cranked one direction, and it was just, like... I'll go that way when I feel like it. Don't worry about it. Like, you're, <laughs> it is what it is, bro. And I'm like, oh, right. I'm driving one of these again. So, trucks no lumber are allowed to pass. That means us. Let that open. And then we'll go ahead and get across the bridge real quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I was like, oh, yes. And then I was like, oh, God. That's close. All right. So, now that we're over the bridge, we're going to make a right. And we'll head down towards the garage. Now, we see a couple of custom houses over here. I love that one. That one's kind of cool looking. So, does this... Oh, wait. This is the only way it does go. And there's a secondary block post right there. So, there's multiple block posts, which makes me... So, there's six lumber mills, multiple block posts. So, this map, if you were going to, like, really log it properly, you would really have to be conscious of the routes you were taking all the time. Like, all the time, all the time. You would always have to be thinking about the routes you were taking... Because if you let that, you know, go, like, let that out of your mind for even a second, you could be, uh, you could be having to reverse back through an area that you really don't want to reverse back through. Put it up to high and then put it back into automatic just to try to get it to, like, reset itself. Come on, go into fifth. There you go. Thankfully, this truck doesn't really have any problems shifting up into fifth. But there's the garage, so we can drop these points off. And there's a fuel station with it, too. That's really good. That helps us out a lot. All right, so we can go ahead and park up right here. 
and two garage points unload and we need two more so there's got to be another garage trailer somewhere or another you know another truck that's got garage points because i'm not sure god i'm trying to think because is the c255 down here yeah it is it is so if you did this properly if you did this properly you would use this to you would have switched to this immediately and then oh god i don't know if it has enough fuel though to get up there it should it's not a big map it, it's it's actually a very small map in comparison to a lot of the other maps that, that i've seen recently with mods so this should have no problems getting up there and i think this is the this is the are you freaking kidding me oh my god i feel so i feel so bad I feel so bad. That's like a total, like, facepalm moment. Like, that's that's just terrible. God. All right. So let's drive this thing up here, up there. And I think this is the attachment that carries garage points. Don't quote me on that, but I want to say this is what it is. Um, let's just let it get into fifth and we'll just cruise. We don't have a trailer to think about. We'll just go. So once we get there and unload it, hopefully th that's what this is for. Hopefully it's not a repair rig. Um, but then again, at the same time... I am pretty inclined to believe that it's the right one because it didn't have any repair points when I went into advanced mode. So that should be clear enough proof that it's a, it, you know, it's a garage tent, basically. But this should be... God, I almost, I almost like, went to go look for my turn signal to put on. I was thinking too much about American Truck Simulator, I guess. Alright, so we'll cross the bridge. And then once we get across the bridge, we're just gonna, like, book it for the garage... Because I want to get that Jeep rescued. Rescued to the garage. God, that thing went a little sideways. It's starting to feel like it was losing grip and it's just going. But yeah, we're going to get that Jeep rescued. We're going to get it fixed. And then we'll have a, uh, an area and a space to customize both the Jeep and the Daihatsu. So we did a little bit of exploring in the Daihatsu. We did a uh, trailer d uh, delivery. And now we're going to do the rest of the garage points delivery and get that garage unlocked properly. So, And thankfully, this truck had enough fuel easily enough fuel to make it down here. I thought it would, but I, I was, like, not sure because I, I don't have that much experience with this map yet. But I was pretty sure that we were going to make it down here just fine. So, let's see what we can do. Oh, yes. All right, so garage unlocked. So that means I'm going to go ahead and back up out of the garage just so we don't run into any issues. And I'm going to go and grab the Jeep, and then I'm going to rescue it to the garage. And boom! So... Everything everything now has an area to, to be rescued to. Everything has a base of operations. And in the next ex episode of Exploration, we'll be using this Jeep to explore some of the uh, yet unexplored areas of this map. So if y'all enjoyed this video and this first part of Exploring La Luna 2, I believe is the name of it, don't forget to leave me a like. Tell me in the comment section down below what you guys thought of it. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time. Talk to y'all later.